Reflecting back to Unit 4, The Wave Nature of Light, what did we discuss? Well, we discussed whether light behaves as a wave or particle. We covered the topics of wave properties, wave phenomena, and wave experiments conducted by incredible physicists. We saw the effects of refraction, reflection, diffraction, interference, and polarization. We investigated the eye-opening double-split experiment produced by Young. And above all else, we connected these separate ideas and connected them into one to explain electromagnetic waves and the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, as great as these were to learn, what's most important is their applications in our world today. Now, since a pandemic has ruled over the planet and I'm currently under a strict stay-at-home order, I thought it would be a great idea to search high and low around my house and see what appliances around me function off the principles and concepts covered in this unit. All right, so before we head on the adventure, I would like to make note that for the sake of time, I will not be explaining each of the applications I find in pure detail. However, I will be pointing at them and just briefly making note of them. So number one, we've got our automated garage doors. So you can see it goes up and down. The garage door is operated by this controller, which acts as a radio transmitter. As such, when I activate the controller, the transmitter shoots out signals in the form of radio waves. These waves are then received by the radio receiver built into the garage door opener. These two parts work in conjunction by wave frequency. If the frequency of the wave tuned from the transmitter has a frequency equal to the frequency used by the receiver, the doors will open and close. These frequencies are extremely precise, which is the reason why my controller is unable to affect the garage doors of my neighbors. A pro that the automated garage door opener has been given is the credit of increased home security, as automatic doors are much tougher to gain access to than a traditional garage door. What's also great about this appliance is that convenience is brought to our daily lives. What's more difficult, manually lifting a door or pressing some buttons? The answer is pretty obvious. Okay, so what can be done to improve them? A frequent problem that arises is that the wave produced by the transmitter is interfered before arriving to the receiver. Although I'm unsure of a way to solve this problem, I do believe it is an issue that must be accounted for. Now you can follow me along into the house. Another appliance we have is my ring doorbell, and this uses the frequency of radio waves. All right, so right here, if we... So now, if we look at the lights up here, I can turn them on and off, and this is just a form of visible light on the electromagnetic spectrum. Right in here, come on in. Again, more examples of visible light, but as well in, my, in this laundry room, we've got the dryer and the washer. And these all emit very low frequency radiation. <laughs> Down here, this is a very useful tool we've got right now during these COVID times. And this is a UV sterilizer. Much needed during these COVID times, this device kills germs and is an alternative to chemical disinfection. This tiny box, when connected to power, is able to emit UVC radiation, the strongest type of UV light. This radiation can be used to sterilize objects and materials, whether it's to clean your phone or a reusable mask, sunglasses, keys, you name it. Although it's well established that UV radiation is carcinogenic for humans, when such appliances have been well calibrated, such as in this instance, it is no cause for concern. Statistics have confirmed that UVC inactivated SARS after six minutes of exposure back in the early 2000s. Taking this idea nowadays, a more recent study has shown UVC-based disinfection is helpful for stopping the COVID-19 virus from replicating. Essentially, the functionality of this box is to emit a specific kind of high-energy, high-frequency UV light that goes on to disinfect objects in its vicinity by killing all sorts of microorganisms, including drug-resistant bacteria. A great idea in itself this application has been important in the fight against COVID-19. However, I propose a change be made with the emitted radiation. Rather than using UVC, we should use 
far UVC, a more recent discovery. It has been found that far UVC is just as effective as UVC, but it uses a lower range of wavelengths for disinfection, meaning it's safer. The only issue with this proposed idea is that disinfection time would be slower. But if we compare the pros and cons, far UVC is by far the better option with regards to our health. Into my mom's office. So it's a little bit busy. We've got something going on here. But in her room, she's got laptops and computers. And so using these, these transmit and, and receive radio waves. And they also emit visible light. Now into the living room. So in my living room, we've got our Wi-Fi router, and this receives radio waves and transmit radio waves to all our smart devices around my home, whether that be the Google Home or Alexa. Now, we've also got our TV, which uh, emits visible light. You know, when we're watching TV, we can see the types of light that come out of it. And in order for this to work, we have our satellite dish outside, which you can't see, but that's what receives our radio waves for us to broadcast stuff on our screen. Now into my favorite room in the house, we've got our kitchen. So, all the appliances. <laughs> so, all the appliances in here. So we've got our fridge, we've got the microwaves. Daddy, you can come in and show it. We've got our fridge, which emits some sort of radiation. Microwaves, they transmit microwave waves. We've got our oven cooktop and our toaster. Ah, uh, the wonderful appliance I use every single morning to make my breakfast. To put it simply, the toaster uses infrared radiation to heat whatever is inside, like bread. When you put your bread in and see the coils glow red, the coils are producing infrared radiation. The radiation ultimately gently dries and chars the surface of the bread, giving it that burnt and toasty look while simultaneously warming it. I'm grateful for this invention because it makes my mornings quick and easy, but I do think it would be nice to expand the usage of see-through toasters so we can see the magic of physics working in real time. This worthwhile feature is also a great function to see the deadness of your toast. Overall, since infrared radiation does no harm to humans, this would be a great feature to consider as an everyday routine will now involve a fun physics demonstration. Other examples of appliances relying on electromagnetic waves include our phones, infrared thermometers, hair dryers, vacuums, and way more than can be mentioned in a single video. To wrap this one up, as can be noted, we are exposed to EM waves all the time. With our phones in our pockets to finding ambiguous items lying around our houses, it's pretty difficult to live a life free of EM radiation. Ending off here, keep in mind that what we've encountered in the Wave Nature of Light unit truly has daily applications.